major champion. Touchdown, Alabama! Welcome, everyone, to the NCAA tournament. It is truly one of the great days of the year. Blood is running, heart is pumping, as the battle gets closer. Marsh magic for the Bulldogs. Yes. How about that? Half court heave for the win. Got it! Two to go. Rises up the shot. Incredible. One more game to go. It's Page off balance. Puts it up. Oh, How did he do that? Three seconds at midcourt. Jenkins gives it to Jenkins for the championship. Yes! The national champions. Quite the audible sigh of relief right around 5 30 p.m eastern time tonight and it might just be coming from that room that is a look at the ncaa selection committee running through all the scenarios so that they can deliver a 68 team field later today they are on the clock and that clock is winding down about five and a half hours remain and that is the ultimate prize that will 68 teams will be chasing and hoping to hoist in Phoenix. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Inside College Basketball, presented by Progressive. I'm Greg Gumbel here in New York, along with a couple of guys who have been awaiting this day since they were born. <laughs> Mark Kellogg and Seth Davis. Um, as, as much as we are awaiting the, 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 the whole bracket, do you see any surprises? Is it going to be you know a surprise what? I to you? I think we may have some, but the thing that's interesting to me is that both Arizona and Duke won their conference tournament championships yesterday, and that will have an effect, I think, on the one seed line. And more importantly, both of these teams throughout the course of the season dealt with significant adversity and turbulence, and now they stand as conference champions with an opportunity to get one seeds. I'm anxious to see how that line plays out for the committee, that one seed line. I have the answers. You don't, you don't know that? I got the answers already. So you got three one seeds who are locks. Villanova's number one overall, that's locked in. Kansas, Duke is your third number one seed, should be locked in. My fourth would be Gonzaga, but Arizona and North Carolina certainly have a case to be mm, made. Okay. You guys okay. always so sound so confident and certain. That's him. No, ahead of time. <laughs> All right, that's nice. And then I'm wrong. Conference <laughs> tournament action was nonstop. Let's take through the highlights. Clark, start with the Big East. Well, I think Villanova locked down that secured number one overall seed, and Josh Hart with 29 points made another statement towards perhaps a national player of the year honor for him. Congratulations to the Wildcats, Big East Conference champions. No Kansas, no problem out of the Big 12 championship. Iowa State Cyclones, normally they're a big three-point shooting team, a little bit off from behind that line last night, but they did hold on to the basketball, shot 54%. Deontay Burton finishing the alley-oop. Steve Prohm gets a little bit wet. That's okay. You can buy a new shirt. Seth in the Mac. Kent State on its way to the tournament. Kent State fans have longed to hear it. Flashes, champions of the Mid-American Conference, back in the NCAA tournament. Folks, stay woke. Middle Tennessee, giddy pucks. Give me three of those on my way to 30 for the night. The Blue Raiders will be a team that has the ability to get to the Sweet 16 and a popular pick to be a surprise. Meanwhile, last night in the big sky as they celebrate at Middle Tennessee, Weber State and North Dakota. Geno Crandall taking in the length of the floor in overtime. He'll hit the runner, and North Dakota wins the big sky. Going dancing for the first time. For the first time, the University of North Dakota is going to crash the party. And what can you say about what the Duke Blue Devils did in the ACC tournament across the river in Brooklyn? Matt Jones with the big three, giving them a four-point lead. B.J. Beecham cuts it to two. And the man of the hour, not sure why... Jason Tatum was not turning. MVP had 19 points. Duke wins four games in four days. They will be a number one seed. 
first time since 1996, the New Orleans Privateers on their way to the tournament thanks to a season high from Tevin Broyles. Two of them right there. Then the Pilfer, and they move on. The Privateers, congratulations to head coach Mark Schlesinger and UNO. So who's moving on and moving in? Out of the WAC, New Mexico State. A 10-point winner over Cal State Bakersfield. They win the WAC championship 70-60. to 60. Oh, it's such a heartbreak. Oregon losing their great shot blocker, three-point shooter Chris Boucher to a torn ACL. And give Arizona credit for taking advantage, including that guy right there, Alonzo Trier, puts him up by 14. He had 23 points. The Arizona Wildcats are your Pac-12 tournament champs. Share the regular season crown, so definitely have a case to be made for the number one seed. We'll see. And in the Big West, it was UC Davis. The dream has happened. The are going dancing. A lot of people had dance invitations extended to them last night. Here's how we stand at this moment. These are the teams already in the NCAA tournament. There are still some teams to be decided today. A champion will be crowned today in the Atlantic 10 for sure. Allie LaForce caught up with VCU head coach Will Wade a short time ago. Coach, this program has had so much recent success in the Atlantic 10 tournament, making it to the championship game five consecutive years now. But throughout that success, just one championship to show for it. How do you bring this team and this senior class that second championship? Well, we've talked about it. That was our goal coming into the week was to get back and then to, to win it. You know, I told all our guys, we need to honor our seniors by playing extremely hard playing for them, playing for our university, playing for our city. Play extremely hard for those guys. They've put this program in tremendous position, and let's finish the job for them. We got unfinished business. We let the regular season title slip away. Now we can finish the job here in the conference title championship. One thing you love about your team is the physicality. You love to get the ball inside. That's one thing Rhode Island does very well. How do you have the edge in that matchup? Well, I don't know if we do. It's going to be a man's game in there. They they got the best of us the first time. I thought they were a little more physical than us. Their length bothered us down their face. Finishing. So we're going to need to go in there. We're going to need to go up strong. We need to go finish finish strong around the rim. we got to put bodies on them and block them out. If we do that, I like our chances. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Ali. CK, once a coach gets to this stage, there really isn't much coaching left to do, is it? No, it's about performance and execution. I like the URI Rams because they've won seven in a row. They've held their opponents to 61 points a game in that seven-game win streak, and E.C. Matthews and Hassan Martin have upticked their production during that seven-game winning streak. All right, we are packed full today from bubbles to brackets and beyond. We'll break it all down when Inside College Basketball, presented by Progressive Insurance, continues. <laughs> Inside College Basketball, presented by Progressive Insurance, is sponsored by Progressive, making it easy to bundle your home and car insurance. People. Maybe. Yes, sir! A tradition unlike any other, the Masters on CBS. are heading to the Atlantic 10 championship and they hope it's just another step toward their first NCAA tournament since 1999. VCU will advance to the Atlantic 10 championship where they'll take on Rhode Island. It is Rams against Rams. Coming up at the bottom of the hour, Rhode Island and VCU will lock horns in a battle of Rams for the Atlantic 10 championship. Rhode Island looking for its first conference crown since 1999. Let's go back to Ali LaForce, who also spoke with Rhode Island head coach Dan Hurley. Coach, since taking over the program in 2012, you promised a trip to the NCAA tournament. You're now one win away. What do you need to see from your team today to make that a reality? Well, this is going to be a real physical game. This is going to be a war. You know, two really tough teams, uh, two really defensive-minded teams, uh, you know, two gritty teams. You know, I think the, the tougher, more uh, more vicious team is probably going to win today. The team that, uh, you know, is quicker to lose balls and the, and the team that uh, dominates the paint and the backboard. Do you feel your team's playing its best basketball at this moment? Yeah, I mean, we're healthy now. Our, our guys are very confident. Uh, you know, we've uh, we're won seven straight. Uh, you know, we've won seven straight road and neutral site games. And, uh, you know, right now they got that look. Timing's there. You just need to finish now. Yeah, I mean, this is the fun part right now. All the work is in, you know, all the practices, the, you know, the game planning and all the work in the preseason. And now it's just time to go and throw the ball up and, and go for the championship. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Thank you.
Allie, thank you. You hear Coach Hurley talking about how tough it is inside. You heard the same thing from Coach Wade. Is this game going to end up in the 30s or what? No, no, they'll score more than that, but it will be a physical contest because both of these teams like to play inside out, and I'm looking for a terrific competitive, worthy of a championship effort from both clubs. I think VCU should feel pretty good about its uh, position in terms of the bubble line. Rhode Island, not so much. Obviously, a win today would erase all that. And this is the last vestige personnel-wise of the Shaka Smart era uh, at VCU with Jaquan Lewis, the point guard, Mo Ali cox their power forward. Will Wade has done an excellent job picking up that mantle and carrying it. I think the URI Rams have earned their way to the field, whether they win or lose today. You are the bracketologist on the desk. So I'll defer to your judgment. <laughs> all right, guys. One of the greatest parts of our road to the Final Four is meeting the teams who are making the journey for the very first time. While everyone's been lamenting whether the Wildcats of Northwestern will finally make history by being selected, here are the others that will be putting on their dancing shoes for the first time. Include UC Davis, North Dakota, Northern Kentucky, and Jacksonville State. And we are joined now by one of those teams experiencing the madness for the first time and the first to clinch a berth to this year's tournament the Ohio Valley Conference champs Jacksonville State head coach Ray Harper and one of his outstanding players Norbertus Giga coach you've been to the tournament a couple of times with Western Kentucky what have you told your team about the experience about what to expect what to look for and how to handle it well we've been off for so long that we we haven't even <laughs> talked about the tournament uh, we've been a uh, We've just been practicing and, and trying to get better, but uh, the main thing is just to enjoy the experience and, and, and enjoy the moment. Um, Coach, you talk about the time off, being away from playing. How have you tried to manage that more specifically over the last 10 days or so? Well, we just wanted to maintain some conditioning, keep the ball in the guys' hands, and really work on some offensive things. Uh, we've gotten a lot of shots, and uh, we'll really uh, start hitting things hard uh, this afternoon. Uh, no, Norbertus, you're a long way from home. Uh, you hail from Lithuania. Uh, I'm curious, do you have family back home able to follow the story, follow what's going on, and uh, are they able to watch your games? I wish my mom could watch it, but uh, she tried to watch a couple of our games, but she couldn't just turn it in. It just didn't work for some reason, I don't know. Um, Lubertus, talk to me a little bit about your team. You, you, you anchor the middle, but your team is pretty much built around the backcourt players. How have you adjusted, one, to being in the States and then playing with a team that has um, such an emphasis on the perimeter? Uh, we just got to stick to our game plan and just, I just got to follow my seniors and just see what they do. And I just want to be the best to help them out, too. <clears throat> Uh, Coach Harper, you guys were picked in the preseason to finish last in the Ohio Valley Conference East Division. At what point in the season did you start to feel like uh, competing and winning a conference championship was possible? Well, we were picked 12th out of 12 teams uh, in the coaches poll. Uh, so I, I think that'll tell you what people expected from us. But we we didn't talk about wins and losses. We talked about getting better. And, and, and it's it's a process. We had to uh, have these kids understand uh, there's a lot of hard work that goes into winning. And fortunately, we opened the season at Tulsa on the road and won by 10. And I, I think these kids at that point believed that if we if we did things the right way, that we might have a chance. And you know, we, we finished nine and seven in the league. But four of those losses was without this guy or starting power forward and Christian Cunningham. So we played some good basketball. And I think, well, you know, we're playing pretty well right now. Coach, as you say, you're going back to work today. We wish you all the best. We will be looking forward to seeing you guys. Thank you so much for joining us, and good luck to you in the tournament. Selection Sunday is filled with suspense, especially for those schools that find themselves on the bubble. When we come back, we'll break down who's in and whose bubble might be about to burst. Tiny bubble. There'll be no sleep till Selection Sunday night. Whose bubble might burst? Make me happy. Makes me Ice gift. And Michigan continues this incredible journey onto the Big Ten championship game. Nice spin out. Ooh. Nigel Hayes. Half wow. 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 Badgers. Looks like they got their mojo back. I can
Later today here on CBS, Michigan and number 24, Wisconsin, will battle in the nation's capital for the Big Ten Championship. Wolverines look to cap an eventful week with a conference title. Uh, one thing that we've been saying about the combatants in this game is they both seem to be hitting a pretty good stride at the right time. No question about it, Greg. Both of these teams are playing outstanding basketball. Not just good, outstanding. They're back to their identity. Derek Walton Jr. has been terrific leading the Wolverines. Defense has picked up there, and Wisconsin has started to play better on the offensive end. But the Wolverines are making it happen because they percolate on offense. They space the floor. They share the ball. They run a lot of good stuff under John Beeline's leadership. But the guy who's making it all work is Derek Walton Jr. He has absolutely been scintillating in his performance. And in this era of one-and-done sensations, to see a young man like Derek Walton become a senior, get a little bit better, and finish his career the way he's playing is terrific. The difference is Wisconsin was playing very poorly down the stretch at the end of the regular season, got away from their identity, and I really feel like they have perhaps rediscovered that by going into the post with Ethan Happ and Nigel Hayes. That's where they butter their bread. Now, the problem is those guys on the season have been really bad foul shooters, but they shot it well in this tournament. They shot it well yesterday. So I think that is Michigan's weakness, is their interior def defense. So Hap and Nigel Hayes, I think, could have a pretty good day, but they have to hit their free throws if they're going to have a chance to win this game. All right, guys, we know both Michigan and Wisconsin are assured of a tournament berth. It's time now to talk about your last five in, your first five out. We co-consulted on this, Seth and I, because he's the expert bracketologist, so we've got consensus, although if I was in the committee room yes. peeling the onion back, I would have a hard time not voting for a team like Illinois State on yeah. my individual vote, just in terms of what I've seen and watched of them. I haven't dug into the numbers greatly, but compared to those other teams, I've seen everybody, Illinois State would get a vote to be on the other side of that um, first, five, first five out. They'd be on the sentimentally, first five. Sentimentally, I'd love to see Illinois State get in. The, the problem is they did not schedule in the non-conference the way you need to, and the conference Fair itself point. didn't really Fair help them. Point. Syracuse is the most interesting team on the board today. And I know a lot of people say, well, they got six top 50 wins. That should lock them in. According to our RPI guru, Jerry Palm, 18 teams, 18 have had six top 50 RPI wins and not gotten into the tournament. All of those wins were at home. Syracuse has two wins away from the Carrier Dome this season. Just by comparison, Vanderbilt who's on the bubble, has three wins away from home against the top 50 of the RPI. I hate to use the word shocked, but I will be very, very surprised if Syracuse is in this tournament. I actually don't even think it's all that close. Different committees think for different ways. Exactly. Different that's though, right? a good point. Very all good right. Point. Northwestern's run in the Big Ten tournament may have ended yesterday, but it appears likely the Wildcats' drought of 78 years without an NCAA tournament appearance is also about to come to an end. Their alumni and their fans across the country eagerly await tonight's selection show. Hello, sports. It's me, Stephen Colbert, and I am thrilled to be coming to you on the brink of March Madness. Enjoy it, because this is the last year your health insurance will cover March Madness. <laughs> this March is particularly mad for me because my alma mater, Northwestern University, is about to make their first NCAA tournament in school history. This is huge. When I was a Northwestern theater student, my improv group had a better shot at making the tournament than the basketball team. <laughs> But the drought ends now. I can feel it. This is the year of the underdogs, whether it be the Cubs, Moonlight, or reality TV billionaires. <laughs> and I am pumped that over 100 years, the Wildcats could be going to the big dance. And once they're there, they will defeat the other people dancing like you do at a dance. <laughs> Northwestern is finally getting off the list of the five original Division I teams that never made the tournament. And I've got a little message to the other teams left on that list. William and Mary and St. Francis, suck it. <laughs> Army and the Citadel, suck it. And thank you for your service. <laughs> and to the Wildcats and everyone at Northwestern, you've got this. Dig down, bear down, dig bear, bear grills. Leave 110% on the court, then put the remainder in a health savings account. And remember our school motto, Kakum Quesunt Vera, which of course is Latin for bring the rock to the rim. Go Wildcats! Woo! <laughs> Thank you.
like that. Stephen taking that time out not, from kicking butt late night in order to help <laughs> us out here. Congratulations. Anybody who's going to the tournament for the first time has a right to crow. Oh, Without it's... question. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Seth. Well, I'm just, I, I think we're the only three people working in sports media who didn't go to Northwestern. <laughs> so uh, they have a lot of cheerleaders uh, amongst our colleagues and uh, well-deserved an incredible feedback. And I really think this is the first of many NCAA tournaments for Northwestern going forward under the leadership of Chris Collins. He's done a phenomenal job. All right, this guys, we'll take a uh, time out here and we will all be back to wrap up this yeah. program after yeah. this. Inside College Basketball, presented by Progressive Insurance, is sponsored by Progressive, making it easy to bundle your home and car insurance. It was Jaquan Lewis who led the way yesterday for VCU, a team high 18 in the overtime win in their Atlantic 10 semifinal matchup with Richmond. And in Rhode Island semifinal, EC Matthews scored a game high 19 points yesterday against Davidson, including four out of four from behind the three point line. We are getting closer to tip off either the Rams of Rhode Island or the Rams of VCU will claim the Atlantic 10 championship and cement the spot in the field of 68. Before we get you out to the game, though, let's check in on Yale and Princeton, the championship game of the inaugural Ivy League tournament, guys. And I love that the Ivy went to a postseason tournament, a great format. Only the top four teams get to qualify, and so only one team is going to represent this great league in the NCAA tournament. You can see Blake Reynolds for Yale. Clark knocking down an early three points. And the best team in the Ivy by far is the Princeton Tigers. Got a scare yesterday. Um, Seth needed overtime to beat a game pin team. I think they come back in this one and win comfortably and represent the Ivy League well in the field of 68. In this inaugural tournament, there's been some terrific basketball played Always. over the last couple of days. 9.07 to play in the first half. Yale leads the Tigers by three, 16-13. In addition to Yale or Princeton, the A-10 champion, four other schools will punch their tickets to the tournament this afternoon. The Big Ten title, of course, the SEC championship, either Arkansas or Kentucky, Sun Belt title and the American Championship. Look ahead to the SEC title game for me. Well, Arkansas gets up and down. Dusty Hanna's a player to keep an eye on. He's had an outstanding year this season for um, Mike Anderson's club. But Kentucky, I think they'll rise up and get it done because defensively they have the potential and ability to be excellent. And I think they'll need And before to be they there. rise up and get it done, they will fall behind by 10 or 12 points. Early. Maybe not today. <laughs> That's what they do. I think the ceiling is the roof for Kentucky today. They tend to play down or up to the level of their competition. <laughs> I think they'll be able to respond well. And of course, Arkansas loves to play that full court pressure. One thing we know about Kentucky is they have guards who like to get out and go. Meanwhile, what do you guys have both been in that tournament selection, the committee selection room? What, what are they doing right now? They're bracketing, basically. I think the field is selected and they've got everything done. Now it's just a matter of um, filling out the bracket. They're watching us. They want to know what to do. We just told them. <laughs> go. Go to work. We will see you back here at halftime. It's Rhode Island and VCU for the Atlantic 10 championship and the automatic bid to the tournament after this message and a word from your local station. The madness is here. Got it. Wow. Big finish. How about this? I did. Sit back and enjoy.